بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم I greet you with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh on this the 21st day of the month of Rajab and we make the dua Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shaban wa barikna Ramadan Our topic is a very very serious one but we will not be devoting more than a very brief time towards it. Uh, it is actually introducing the topic. Well, if nuclear war takes place, who will be blamed for it? That's the topic. And uh, I am not the only one by any means. There are huge numbers of scholars and analysts around the world who are already of the same view as I am that nuclear war seems to be now inevitable and uh, the catalyst for that nu nuclear war would be the, the incapacity of the West to be able to defeat Russia in Ukraine. It is when it becomes clear that Ukraine is crumbling and no amount of shipment of weapons would change that that the danger exists that there will be a escalation towards nuclear war provoked by whoever it is but an escalation to nuclear war so i'm not the only one who is saying that by any means there are many many others but uh, i want to address the subject of a post nuclear war world and uh, the immense amount of devastation which will take place only a remnant of mankind will survive that war the president of russia has famously declared and you know when he speaks you better listen he doesn't play around with words not the president of russia he says we can destroy the whole of the united states of america in half an hour and so we expect therefore that nuclear war would be a war to the finish that each side would use the maximum amount of nuclear weapons that they can use and hence it is not uh, far-fetched for us to conclude that there will be immense devastating devastation around the world particularly in russia china and in the western world and wherever there are american bases like the one of the biggest one of all in kosovo um, whatever remains of the world after that nuclear war uh, will be one in which whoever is survives that war would ask who is to blame for this and whoever is able to uh, uh, get mankind, the majority of mankind, to agree upon who is to blame for that war, that country, those people, are going to be targeted by mankind. It is not in Islamic eschatology at all that all of mankind will perish. There'll be no more life on earth after that nuclear war. Because our Prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him, and praise be to Allah, that as a consequence of Islamic eschatology, there is a growing recognition of the fact that when Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, speaks, you better listen. There's a growing recognition recognition of that in the world today despite despite so many years and so many centuries of propaganda and lies against him he said that uh, either seven years or seven months uh, but uh, we prefer the seven years hadith after the great war that a muslim army will conquer constantinople i wonder why the scholars of Islam are not paying attention to this prophecy. Why are they not speaking on this prophecy? 
perhaps our viewing audience, in, including my critics, and I have no, <laughs> I have no shortage of critics at all. And uh, some of my critics, of course, uh, make all kinds of nasty statements. But not all of them are like that. Not all of them are like that at all. So even my critics, as well as the rest, should be asking the scholars of Islam, of course, respectfully, so not badgering them. Why are you not speaking about this prophecy that after the Great War, within a few years, a Muslim army will conquer Constantinople? And he praised the army and he praised the, co the commander. He said, لَتَفْتَحَنَّ الْقُنْسْتَنْتِنِيَ وَلَنِعْمَ الْأَمِيرُ أَمِيرُهَا وَلَنِعْمَ الْجَيْشُ ذَلِكَ الْجَيْشُ he praised the army and he praised the commander. So we know there is life after, after uh, the Great War. But the question is, in that post-nuclear war world, uh, when there will be no internet after the nuclear war, and, uh, I, and I want to offer a short comment on that subject after this video, who is going to be blamed for that great war and that devastation of mankind? Well, when 9-11 took place, we asked, who has benefited? Who has benefited the most from 9-11? That's the good place to start in determining who is responsible for 9-11. When the, the underground, underwater pipeline was blown up, delivering oil from, from Russia to Germany, a good place to start in determining who was responsible for blowing up that pipeline is who benefited the most from it. Hmm? And every European should ask that question because Europe is in difficulties now and this year will be even worse than last year for Europe. Yeah, from, from now until winter. This is still winter. Next, from now until next winter. Europe is going to be increasingly, increasingly facing difficulties. So every European should be asking, who is responsible for that? So similarly, if the Great War takes place, or when the Great War takes place, a good place for mankind to start to determine who is responsible for that Great War is who will benefit the most. Now, I offer an Islamic eschatology. And in my eschatology, my eschatological view, we have a figure called the false messiah. They also have it in Christian eschatology. And our Prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him, described him as al Masihud Dajjal. al Masihud Dajjal. He's not simply Dajjal or the false. The, the, the impersonator, he is more than that. He is the false messiah. So Dajjal is linked with the subject of the messiah. And in order for him to fulfill his mission of impersonation of the true messiah, I hope this is not too complex for you, that you'll be able to think and understand. This is Islamic eschatology. And every Christian listening to this will be able to understand it. If the Jal, the, the Antichrist, is to fulfill his mission of successfully impersonating the Messiah, then what is the mission of the Messiah? The mission of the Messiah, and I said to you in a previous video, it is my view that the promise of the Messiah uh, Jewish scholars should correct me if I'm wrong. The promise, the divine promise of the Messiah was given to the Israelite people only after the Israelite kingdom, the holy state of Israel collapsed after the death of Solomon, Nabi Suleiman, when they were in a state of despair and weeping. And so it was something which brought joy to their hearts that the Messiah is coming a divinely promised Messiah who will bring back the golden age when holy Israel will be restored and holy Israel will once again become the ruling state of the world. 
the religion, the one religion accepted by Allah, the one true religion is called, it is of course the religion of Ibrahim Islam, Abraham. And the Quran orders Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, you must follow the religion of Abraham. So only a schoolboy would say that Islam came to the world 1400 years ago with Prophet Muhammad. Only a schoolboy would say that. So this religion which came from Abraham, Nabi Ibrahim, as the same religion which came with Moses, Nabi Musa, and with Jesus, Nabi Isa, Allah's blessing be upon him, it's the same religion which came with Nabi Muhammad, and it is called the religion of submission to the one God rather than submission to the government. And that is Islam. That is Islam. So Islam will rule the world from Jerusalem when the Messiah comes. Not that the followers of Prophet Muhammad <laughs> would rule the world from Jerusalem. A schoolboy will say that. No, no. It is the Messiah, Jesus, the son of the Virgin Mary. It is he and the religion which he has brought, which is the same religion that we have. It is that religion which will rule the world from Jerusalem in a holy state of Israel. This is Islamic eschatology. The, the, the followers of Prophet Muhammad, we will have a, a holy state in Mecca and it will be led by the Imam al-Mahdi. And there will be fraternity and collaboration between the two. The, the holy state in Jerusalem and the holy state in Mecca. But it is, the, it is the Messiah who will rule the world from Jerusalem, from a holy state. So if the false Messiah is to impersonate the true Messiah, number one, he has to liberate the holy land for the Israelite people. He's done that already. Has he not? Number two, he has to bring the Israelite people back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. Two thousand years after Allah expelled them from the land. He's done that already, has he not? Number three, he has to restore the state of Israel in the Holy Land and get the Israelite people, today they're called Jews, to believe that this is Holy Israel. He's done that already, has he not? Has he not? And then finally, he has to take that Israel and make it the ruling state in the world that is still to come. And therefore, he gave us Pax Britannica, and then Pax Americana, and then a Pax Judaica to complete his mission with Israel ruling the world. If Israel is to rule the world, and I'm not the only one saying that, then modern Western civilization and Russia and China, you have to get them to fight with each other, to mutually destroy each other. That's the plan. That's the plan. So when nuclear war takes place, then when mankind sees what we are saying is going to happen, you, you, we see a state of Israel attempting to replace the United States of America as the next ruling state in the world. This is nothing new. This is in my book, Jerusalem, in the Quran, written more than 20 years ago. 20 years ago. From the time you see the evidence, I hope they're listening to me in Israel, from the time the world sees, or the remnant of the world sees the evidence that a Pax Judaica is coming to replace Pax Americana, and Israel is poised to assume position as the ruling state in the world, taking first of all control over money, with one central bank ruling the one currency that all of mankind will have, and of course that will be in Israel then it will not be difficult for mankind to come to the conclusion they are the ones responsible for the Great War. 
I don't have to provide the evidence who pulled the trigger, who did this and who did that. Who is benefiting from the Great War? So I want to end this brief video, which introduces a new subject now, which I have not discussed in the past. The great likelihood that in a post-nuclear world, mankind will eventually blame the state of Israel and the Zionist movement around the world, blame them for the nuclear war. If I am wrong, if, this, if evidence of this never materializes, then I'm wrong. Yes, I'm wrong. And I'll accept if I'm still alive, I'm wrong. But if the evidence does emerge, and I'm right, then they'll confirm the truth, which came with the Quran and with Prophet Muhammad. Allah's blessing be upon him. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.